Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we have our next big beastie monster on the channel for your viewing pleasure, the Watcher in the Water. This is a huge and very busy model that actually is a lot less daunting than you'd originally think. With simple green and flesh recipes and relatively uncomplicated application, you can achieve great results on this model. The skin and details are so textured that we're going to be relying quite heavily on dry brushes to do most of the work for us. We've also given a step-by-step -step guide for the base, which doesn't need to be overly complicated as the Mahusi squid will cover up a lot of the details when he's actually glued on the base. The recipe for painting the sand and the extra details on the base itself can be found in our 5 minute basing tutorials playlist. So once the model was cleaned and assembled, we undercoated it thoroughly with Chaos Black Spray. Well enough of me jabbering on, brush is ready guys and let's get painting! The Watcher's Main Body The main body of the Watcher was base coated with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Castellan Green and Rhinox Hide. This includes the upper areas of all the tentacles, all around the legs, the main torso and the reverse of the neck crests. The texture of the Watcher's skin is very rigid and very inconsistent. There are also a lot of gaps, nooks and crannies that we need to make sure we get a good, even coverage of this base coat. We then applied a secondary layer by adding Shrekken Green into the original base coat mix. We applied this as a wet brush to ensure that it blended and tied in with the tones of the base coat to give a more natural hue to the watcher's skin. Once the tones are tied in for the watcher's body, we applied an all over wash with Athonian Camo Shade, thinned down with some Lamia Medium. This will help bolster the hue of the greens and provide some initial shading to the texture of the watcher's skin before the overall toning wash. Once this is dried thoroughly, we applied a second wash now with Agrax Surf Shade. With both these washes, it's important to make sure this doesn't pull too much in the recesses. This will be challenging as there's so many of them, but careful application and mopping up any excess will go a long way towards helping. Once both your washes are thoroughly dry, we applied a very heavy dry brush, adding Lauren Forest into the previous pre-wash mix. Swapping the dry brush out for a more rounded one will help get us in all the nooks and crannies and give a super clean, uniform coverage. followed by another, more gentle dry brush now by adding in Nurgling Green to the overall mix. Yeah, there's a lot of greens, we're nearly using the whole range. We're going to be adding the Nurgling Green in gradual increments and applying numerous layering dry brushes to build up the tone of the skin before we get to the final stage. using pure Nurgling Green for the final penultimate highlight dry brush as you can see here. Once you're happy with the tones you've built up for the watcher's skin, we can apply the final gentle dry brush stage with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Nurgling Green and Dawn Yellow just to pick out the most absolute raised ridges, postules and details. Once 
a watcher's fleshy underbelly. The squishy, fleshy underbelly was base coated with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Bugman's Glow and Emperor's Children, basically undercoating the entire underside including the reverse of each tentacle and the inner ridges that frame the face and the mouth. All these fleshy areas were then given a thorough wash with Reitland Flesh Shade, thinned down with Lamia Medium. The word fleshy is starting to sound a bit weird now. For the first layer dry brush we started adding in Cadian Flesh Tone to the base coat mix in an approximate 2 to 1 ratio mix. Applying this here as a heavier dry brush over the main body of the underside then switching to a thinner, more targeted dry brush for the underside of the tentacles. With the areas by the face we switched to a targeted layer and highlight instead of using a dry brush. Continue adding Cadian Flesh Tone to the mix in gradual increments as we did the main body until you're dry brushing over with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Finally, apply a highlight to the fleshy face areas with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Deepkin Flesh. We haven't worried too much about the underside at this stage as that will be sitting against the scenic face anyway so you won't really see it too much. The watcher's finishing details. Carefully pick out all the watcher's jagged teeth with Rakar flesh. Then apply a quick edge highlight using Pallid Witch flesh. The eye recesses were painted in with Abaddon Black. Then finish off with two dots of Pad of Witch Flesh either side. Scenic Base Now with the watcher done it's time to move on to the scenic base. To start with we base coated all the rocks with a solid coat of Mechanica Standard Grey mixed with Abaddon Black. The rocks were then given a thorough wash with numb oil thinned down again with Lamia Medium.
Once the wash is dry, we apply a heavy dry brush over the top with pure Mechanica Standard Grey. Followed by a lighter dry brush with Dawnstone. Another lighter dry brush then with Administratum Grey. And finally with dusting over the top with a feather light dry brush of Palette Witch Flesh. The bones and skeletons of the poor dwarves on the base were picked out using Rakar flesh. These were then washed with Agrax Earth Shade. and carefully highlighted with pallet bridge flesh just to make them pop. Any browns, belts, beards, hair, boots and weapon shafts were then carefully picked out with dryer bark. These were all then carefully highlighted with Gawthor Brown. before receiving a toning glaze to tie the base coat and highlight together. Any silvers and metals were base coated with lead belcher. These were then thoroughly washed with Nung Oil. All the gold and bronze armour on the large shield were base coated with Rune Lord Brass. These two were then given a thorough wash of Agrax Earth Shade. And finally highlighted with a mix of Rune Lord Brass and Stormhose Silver. We used two recipes to give some variety to all the cloth. 
Firstly, the cloaks and main bulk of the robes were base coated with a three-part mix of storm vermin fur, Abaddon black and dryad bark. These were then washed with nan oil. And carefully highlighted with pure storm vermin fur. The cloaks then given a final quick dusting, pile of which flesh, just to give them a more aged, dirty and dusty look. The remaining cloth areas were base coated with castellan green and rhinoxide. Highlighted by adding Baylor Brown into the mix. And there we have it, the Watcher in the Water, vigilant guard over the gates of Moria, constantly waiting to lurch from the depths in search of its next meal, finished and ready to wreak havoc on the tabletop. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, please leave a like and subscribe to help push the channel out to more avid hobbyists. But until next time, guys, as always, take care and happy hobbying.